What's up everybody? It's your old pal Simon from Lake Hub. Welcome to my kitchen. We're doing a catch, clean and cook video for redfish. Yep, saltwater species. Hey, we love our lakes. Sometimes you just gotta get out of town, go hit the beach. So summertime, man, a lot of people go down the Gulf Coast, a lot of people across the south, Florida, Texas, all the way down to Mexico, right? We go to the Gulf Coast, have ourselves a good time at the beach, get a little salty. So that's what we did. Chris and I went down with a, a guide, Captain Jesse Torres out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Man, he knows his stuff. He grew up on the Corpus Christi Bay out there and he put us on some fish. Check this beast out. This is my first redfish ever. I've never been redfish fishing before. And this thing, this sucker, woo! Oh my gosh, what a fight. It was so much fun. Uh, we caught speckled trout all morning and then we started chasing reds and it was hard fishing. It was hard fishing. We, we spotted a school of a lot of them. Uh, the captain's got really good eyes for checking the surface and he said just the sheer volume, he said there must have been hundreds of fish in the school because it was only about four feet deep where they were. And it was actually pushing the water up. <laughs> so the reflection looks a little bit different, but he's got that keen eye for it. Heck, I didn't even see it. When he, wham, powered down the motor, flipped it around, he said, be quiet, don't make a sound, get a line in the water out the left side right now. And we weren't able to quite sneak up on them. They were moving. And so the they were moving faster than the trolling motor was moving. And anything else we would have done would have spooked that school. So we weren't able to get into them. So it was back to hard fishing. But we found uh, a couple docks, you know, some old structure that was kind of worn out, dilapidated, it, with, some, with some kind of bare sandy spots around. That's a good spot. It's a good habitat uh, because what they'll do uh, this, is what, this is what Jesse says. What the reds will do is they'll push bait through the weeds, through the grass. And then once they, once they push them into an open sandy area, boom, it's on, right? And so caught this bad boy on a live croaker off the bottom in an open sandy area. And let me tell you, there is no mistaking a redfish bite. I mean, he told me, he said, hey, when it happens, it's gonna be like thump and it's on. And it was. And, and it, it was like very apparent right away. This is a big fish right here. So it was fun. It was fun to, to reel that thing in. And I was so nervous about like making a mistake and snapping it off or that thing diving under the boat or something like that. And uh, that I didn't say a word. I didn't say a woohoo. You know, I said, I think I said fish on maybe. And then that's it until it was in the net. And then it was high fives, you know? Uh, really cool, really cool experience to catch a keeper. This one was about 22 inches. There's a slot limit in that area, 20 to 28, I believe, 21 to 28, something like that. And then over 28 inches, you have to tag it uh, with your, the tag that comes with your license. Uh, but really, you know, fish that big, those are breeders. They're not really good eaters anyway. You know, they say breeders ain't eaters. Um, so it, you can tag it. You can tag it in Texas. You can keep one larger than 28. You got to know your local regulations. And if you don't know, you just ask somebody, hey, because sometimes it's kind of weird. You know, hey, this side of the this side of the bay, it's this and that side of the bay, it's that or north of this bridge and north of this latitude, whatever. Uh, <laughs> right. So the, you got to know your regulations if you're going to be keeping them. Uh, in this case, if you hire a guide, then you just follow their directions. All day long, you follow their directions. Take this rod, cast it over there, do this, tap, 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 reel, 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 whatever they tell you to do, you do it. Just trust them. Don't think that you know it all. You gotta trust the local guide. So that's what we did. We're all prepped here. I've got my big chopping knife because there's some big bones to cut through on this big fish. I've got my fillet knife, right? I got my dog. What's up, Rexy Roo? I've got my receptacle for the fillets. I got my bag for the carcass. Let's get after it. First things first, a couple passes through my sharpening stone. This is a pocket knife sharpener. 
Uh, there's two ceramic stones you can see there in a V. Just pass it through five times. Doesn't matter what animal I'm cleaning or what knife I'm using, I always pass it through five times through a ceramic. And I've got maximum sharpness. All right, let's get after it. So far, this is working out pretty good. I'm getting the tip right, right in the seam right here. And it's getting, it's getting around the scales. So I'm gonna keep doing that. My strategy's working. All right. Once we get in there, you'll see that what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all this meat off and then do just what I've done in other videos, what Chris has done is get, it, get this filet off the bones, keep this attached right here, flip it over, and then do what this knife is really good at, which is skinning. So you can see we've got this first cut here. I'm gonna keep working it. I'm not quite down to the ribs yet. So I'm gonna keep working it. And I'm just gonna make, keep making passes, trying to use as much of the length of the blade as I can. Um, because if you're gonna use the, if you're gonna rely on your tip the whole time, you're just gonna have all these slashes in the meat and it just doesn't look pretty. But if you use the whole length of the blade as much as you can, then it's gonna be a nice clean cut on your filet and it'll look good. So now I gotta, you gotta feel it. You gotta do everything by feel now. So we're down to the ribs. I'm just going to try to cut around the ribs. I'm not going to cut them off. I'm going to try to cut around them and see how that goes on this side. All right. So we're still working around the ribs. You can see we had our spine. Our spine's right here. So, you know, all the, all the bones coming straight up into the fins right here. That's pretty clean. We cut all that off pretty clean here. Pretty clean, pretty tight. Uh, the challenging part is when the ribs curl off of the spine, you know, the shape of the blade, this is where a different shape blade comes in handy. You can also go kind of from the inside because you can see the bones and you can feel them. Um, so at some point we'll kind of flip in and out here a little bit because you can, you can kind of let the bones lead you. Now we're kind of past the ribs and kind of work a little bit faster here Get under this chunk here. So now we're just kind of feeling it, right? You're feeling it, you're working it. Uh, I'm gonna, I need a slit from here all the way down here. So I just cut up in the, cut up in the stomach all the way down to the anal fin right here to take all the guts out. And I mean, you just, once you take the head off, slit the belly open like that. You can, you can even put the knife all the way to the end and just go whoop and all in one shot. I had to, cut through kind of the breastbone right here. But other than that, whoosh, and the belly slit, you can grab all the guts, rip them all out in one shot. Uh, so that's what I did just because I knew that we weren't gonna, I wanted to film this um, and wasn't gonna be able to do it right away. I wanna make sure that our meat stayed fresh. So now it's time to slit the rest of the way down to the tail. We're cutting through some out scales you can see the scales flying off here I mean when I say it's like chain mail look at that that's crazy some big scales all right don't worry about the scales they're gonna get everywhere they're gonna get on everything we're gonna rinse all this meat off really well look at this it's just ripping now that's perfect all right we'll give it a little cut just to make sure it stays clean we don't leave any meat on there and we are almost to the tail I'm gonna set this right here. Cause this is all rinsed off. The outside of the fish is all rinsed off and clean when I gutted it. There we go. All right. So now I'm gonna check here and make sure we can see. Here's what you do. We've got some good light on here. You start cutting down at a slight, slight angle. I'm pushing on the blade to flex it so that it stays flat. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it that way. I'm gonna put either a finger here or a thumb here, probably my thumb because that's a better grip. And now I'm gonna work back and forth. It's just sliding, now it's sliding on the skin. So we're gonna go down a slight angle until you find the skin. It'll feel different, it'll feel a little more resistant. Then you go flat, bend that filet knife, keep pulling the meat back, 
keep pulling the skin down and just work your way back and forth. Ooh, there we go. Now it's cutting. So we had a little camera issue there, but you continue to just pull, you know, you're pulling uh, the, the fillet knife kind of back and forth, sawing it back and forth as you're pulling and going along. No real surprises there. So you just do that until it's skinned and then we're ready to go. Then you rinse it off, pat it dry with a paper towel. Now we've got one last little cut here to make. I'm gonna use a different knife. I'm just use a steak knife here. So you can see we've got this line right here. This is fat and fat has a really strong taste to it. So what we're gonna do as I kick the dog bowl there is you cut like a little V. You cut a little bit this way, cut a little bit that way, and then you can just pull that sucker right out. We'll end up with two pieces here and that is okay. Because this is something I do on just about every fish that I find this strip of fat on. Um, because if you are fishing, let's say, in a bay or a lake, um, if there's industry around, then there, can, there might be some uh, concentration of, of stuff in here too. You know, like um, could be heavy metals or something like that. Very, very trace amounts. But um, for instance, in tuna, right, they say, limit your turn your your intake of tuna because of the mercury and all that kind of stuff it's in the fat um so if you trim fat then you're taking most of that out anyway so you can eat even more so now we've got two pieces that are ready to cook now what i'm going to do is i'm going to bake it um, i've already got my oven warming at 425 and i'm going to do a fast hot bake uh foil wrapped bake um, it's going to be, uh, my rule of thumb is usually 12 to 15 minutes with these two cuts. I'm probably going to do 12 and then check them because I don't want to overcut them. I, I don't want to overcook them and they're thick, but they're not, you know, they're not like an inch thick. So I think that 12 minutes will probably do us just right. Um, now at the bare minimum, I'm adding some extras here, the bare minimum, olive oil, salt and pepper, or, you know, some kind of oil salt and pepper. I like olive oil. It's universal, works really well. The taste is savory, works well with fish. And I like to put some on the bottom. This is extra virgin olive oil. And then we'll salt and pepper the filet. And that's pretty simple. I also like to add a splash of lemon and then let it sit on a bed of thinly cut onions. So the onions are going to sit in olive oil, olive, olive oil on top of the onions. And then that will ensure that one, they don't stick to the pan. They'll give it a little extra flavor as it's baking. I really like that. Um, I normally cook with garlic, uh, but in this case with lemon, I just think that there's a weird reaction. I don't know if it's a chemical thing or what, but there is something funky that happens when you bake lemon and garlic together. And I just don't like it with the fish. So, Onion and lemon go really well together. Um, overdo it on the olive oil, underdo it on the lemon juice. So I'm gonna slice up some lemon or some onions here real quick, just real, real thin. Just enough to cover that bed. I think that should probably do this just fine. I'm gonna break it up, kind of let them fall in. Again, this is just really thin. We want, we just want some of that onion goodness to kind of permeate. Since this is going to be uh, topped in foil, then all those good aromas will work in there together, and it will be lovely. All right, that's pretty good. A little more EVOO. Top of that. And then I'm going to salt and pepper the flays and then put them that face down. In fact, I'm going to do one more cut here to make sure that we can fit because we are about one blade length. So I'm going to cut this one right in the middle. And this one, cut this piece out. So I've already felt for bones um, when, I when I rinsed it off. You know, you rinse it real good 
and kind of rub it like this and feel for any bones. I didn't find any, so I'm, I'm pretty confident we're pretty good here. So here's what we're gonna do. Salt, pepper, flip this over and we'll do it again inside. real quick here. Don't be shy. You can really lay it on there. Don't need to overdo it, but you can really, you can probably put on more than you think you do. You need to. All right, got those out of the way. I'm gonna do one more kind of crisscross. And this will all, when it gets real hot, this oil, you don't need to worry about spreading it all out. It will start to thin out. It'll cover everything pretty well. And then just dash, just a dash of the lemon. The lemon and the onion, those will work really well together. I'll put a little bit on the bottom too. So that'll kind of bake and evaporate. And that would be some goodness. I kind of spilled some on the side. This is going to be a sticky mess if I don't clean it right now. There we go. All right, last step is the foil. All we're trying to do here is just protect it from getting dried out. So foil, make it reasonably tight that it doesn't need to, uh, we don't need to hold any pressure or anything like that here. Just make it reasonably tight. And away we go. All righty. We will check back in 12 minutes, see how we're looking. All right, time to check it. Nice and hot. Just aluminum off. Watch your face because it'll steam a little bit. Got enough good stuff in there. Woo! That smells good. All right, get another pad here so I can show you. So that, I actually left it in a few minutes longer. I think it was a little bit too long, but that's okay. This thick, thick piece right here. Oh yeah, that's just right. This is, it's not dry, but it's, it's definitely well done. You can see all that goodness right there, all that oil, lemon mixed together. Oh, it smells so good. All right, let's try it out. That's good, that's good. If you want, you can splash a little more fresh lemon on top. If you really like lemon with your fish, just don't overdo it before you cook it. You just want a little bit of lemon. I mean, it's really, I like it just as is. A little hint of lemon cooked into it. That onion really makes the biggest difference. That's some good stuff right there. Hope you like this video. Get outside and do some fishing. Come on, everybody. We'll see you next time.